Welcome to a new in the mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. Before I get started, I'm going to take a second to remind you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon because that's a good way you will know for sure when I upload new videos. Now let's start with this uh, small box. It's the uh, Sonoff uh, RF R3 model. This means it's one of the latest versions of Sonoff and features the 433 MHz RF module as well. This adds another layer of communication by allowing you to receive or send signals to devices working on 433 MHz while at the same time being connected through Wi-Fi on 2.4 GHz. I'm not sure of the full capabilities of the 433 MHz. I think at a minimum it should be able to control some home appliances, but I need to read more on the subject and maybe show you an example in a future video. I think the Sonoff ecosystem evolved a bit since I got the first version they released, uh, especially the, I can see from the exterior that the enclosure evolved. And now they also provide a REST API so you can interface with the Sonoff easily. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com, a professional PCB supplier who can offer 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for just $2. You also have a selection of solder mask colors with no extra cost and affordable laser cut stencils, so it's definitely worth checking them out. Next, uh, we'll dive into the connector section because I have a bunch of them and I'm gonna start with these E14 to E27 bulb adapters. I need these because uh, I have some lamp holders that feature E14 sockets but I'm using E27 LED lamps that provide better lighting. So I'm gonna use these adapters to fit my favorite bulbs here. These are fairly inexpensive and surprisingly not easy to find local so I had to order them from AliExpress and as usual you'll find the link to these in the description below. You may be needing some different sockets adapters but you can find these in any combination you might need. Next I have a set of these U-shaped uh, inline cream connectors and they come in a set with two colors, supposedly brass and uh, nickel plated and these are nice if you want to splice together two or more cables, especially in applications like automotive. You'll never find soldered wires from the factory, they are always crimped with these types of connectors because long term it's more reliable than a soldered connection. I'm not sure where you would uh, want to use the uh, yellow ones or where you would use the nickel plated ones. I'm probably not going to care about that. I'm mostly interested now to see if I can crimp this properly with the uh, crimp tool that I have because simply uh, crimping them with a pair of pliers will not produce adequate results. I mean you're better off with soldering the wires instead of using a pair of pliers for crimping these but they generally look like the ends of some uh, bigger JST or blade connectors so it should be possible to crimp these with my uh, crimp tool. Next I have an interesting set of connection terminals that are waterproof and you might have seen these before used in uh, telephone lines because the, the way they work is you insert two wires and then press this uh, red cap with a pair of pliers which will lock the connection and ensure contact uh, between the two wires through this uh, blade they have inside. The inside of these connectors is filled with some uh, dielectric silicon grease and that is what ensures the waterproof feature. These ones with the red caps are the uh, K3 model which is the larger type and accepts wires from 0.4 up to 0.9 millimeters and I thought these are pretty interesting and might prove useful someday so they're a nice addition to my box of connectors. Next I have some crimp connectors that are usually found in automotive mods. People that work in the industry of uh, installing automotive mods tend to use these to piggyback on existing wires. And the listing also mentioned the keywords scotch lock so I'm not sure if this is a replica of some successful commercial product but it could very well be because I don't think our friends uh, really invented this. However, like I mentioned, useful when you just want to take power and ground or tap a signal on an existing wire. Using them is pretty simple. After inserting the wires in here, you'll need a pair of pliers to press this blade which will make a connection with the wires. The resulting connection should be fairly good and reliable. And these come in different sizes uh, and they are color coded 
and according to their size they will accept a uh, different wire thickness and will have a uh, different current rating. Next I have some different style of uh, Scotch Lock Quick Splice Connectors. These come in a set, uh, they are once again color coded for size but they are two pieces set for each connection. You have the splice connector and then you have the blade connector that can mate with the splice connector and you will uh, end up with a T-junction. The advantage of this type of connector is that you can disconnect and connect the junction that you just made by removing the blade connector. Whether you need this feature or not depends on the uh, application but it can't hurt keeping a set of these in my toolbox, they might prove useful someday. All of the connectors shown here are probably only safe to use up to 24 volts DC, anything above that I wouldn't feel safe but it's up to you in the end if you want to play it safe or not. Next I have a set of these uh, lure lock syringes which I got for filling them with uh, gel flux. Specifically I would like to transfer this big chunk of uh, yellow paste flux which works reasonably well into one of these uh, syringes. And someone suggested I should heat up the gel flux so it becomes liquid for easy transfer and I think that's what I'm going to do, it's a good idea. And there are also these small lure lock adapters which you can use to connect two of these syringes together. I don't have that type of adapter but it would help to fill in the liquid the other way around. This, is, this would be ideal because it would not contaminate the uh, back of the syringe. But we'll see what kind of uh, solution I will use. I will need to figure something out. Next I have a couple of phone holders. I thought I'd try something new. This one was kind of a disappointment in how it looks because let me show you this image they had on the product page. So it's supposed to sit on the dashboard but look at the quality of the plastic and the finish they show in the image and then look at the real thing. Uh, I think the finish and the quality is not the same and uh, these two pieces are detachable. They are a pain to assemble because they have these uh, self-locking pins that you need to insert in these tight holes and it doesn't even feel as non-slip on the back as they ad advertise but I'll have to give it a try and see how it uh, performs uh, in the car. So far it, it doesn't seem like it would do the job. And the next holder is supposed to uh, attach to the lip of the dashboard uh, just over the instruments and it should hold the phone right in your field of view which is a nice idea I mean you don't have to take your eyes off the road however this will heavily depend on how you sit behind the wheel because it could also mean it takes away from the view in front of you so I will have to test this and see how it, beha how it behaves in my particular setup. Next I got a new set of these uh, trim panel remover tools or spudgers Call them as you wish, their purpose is to help you detach plastic trim panels without breaking them. They are especially useful in your car but I've used them to take apart other electrical equipment as well. The thing is they will get damaged after repeated usage so you will need a new set at some point and I've noticed that after they get scuffed they tend to get sharp edges which uh, might scratch delicate plastic trim pieces so it's best to get new ones for best results. As usual, you'll find the link for these in the description below the video. At some point, this little module appeared in my AliExpress suggested products bar and I had to order one. It's a barcode scanner with a dual interface. It can output the uh, data via serial or via USB. And this is capable of scanning 1D and 2D barcodes as well. But unfortunately, it's not very accurate. I mean it's kind of picky about the scanning distance, the angle, the lighting, so it doesn't pick up the codes easily. Let me show you how it works by connecting it to a uh, power bank. It makes uh, this beep when it registers a code and it will then output via USB or serial depending on how you configured it. And let's try to scan for example this uh, barcode from DigiKey. So you, as you can see the red light because it does output this uh, red light bar and uh, a white light for lighting the, uh, the subject but take a look at the red light bar it, it doesn't even have to be on the barcode and uh, the camera registers the barcode so I'm not sure why they still have that there I'm not sure if it helps or not it's just very 
picky about the distance because unless you get the distance right and the angle right and the lighting right it will not read the code if you select the usb interface this will register as an hit input device and it will just paste the text as a keyboard device to your computer or you can use the serial output if you want to integrate this to some microcontroller it does have its uh, own white and red led to illuminate the scanning surface but like i said it's uh, quite picky and it's hard to scan small barcodes for a good scanning module i think you'll need to spend upwards of 50 dollars but it is however quite compact and uh, it might be possible to integrate this into a system where you can uh, closely control the distance to the barcode it needs to scan and the uh, illumination and angle if you got all of those things under control i think you can get uh, reliable results from this uh, relatively inexpensive module everyone knows rgb led strips but have you seen one this small so far this is based on the ws2812 2020 rgb leds which are just 2 by 2 millimeters and this strip has 10 leds spaced 5 millimeters apart the width is 3.4 millimeters and the total length is 50 millimeters. Same as with the regular strips, you can cut this to the length you need, but this also comes with a ready attached JST connector with three pins, ground, VCC and data. The pin pitch is one millimeter and uh, I thought this would be quite interesting to attach it to one of my RC planes because flight controller boards usually have dedicated outputs for controlling these RGB LEDs and they can flash various patterns depending on the status of the aircraft. And I quite liked uh, this uh, LED strip because it's so small and compact and features 10 LEDs in total. Next I have a short piece of 19 old wire and this is a so-called shape memory wire because it can be programmed into a certain shape you can then mechanically straighten the wire and by applying heat the wire will return to its uh, programmed shape it's very easy to apply heat by connecting it to a current limited power supply so let's check what shape does this piece of wire have programmed in i'm connecting this to my bench power supply which is set for 5 volts i'm going to slowly ramp up the current limit this is right now at uh, 400 milliamps let's go up to one amp when we can see the wire starts moving and it's pulling the probes 1.2 amps and it's slowly pulling back into the shape it was uh, programmed for And this is the shape i don't know what this means uh, it was shown in the aliexpress product page as well but as you saw it just needs uh, one amp to get to this shape to program this to a different shape you first need to arrange it into the shape that you want to program and you'll have to use some kind of uh, nails to keep it uh, in the shape you want to program it because you'll have to hit it to 500 degrees celsius for about a minute after that you need to rapidly cool it by quenching into water and by doing so the new shape has been programmed generally people tend to use a gas burner uh, and, or a candle to heat this up for programming but remember the the flame temperature is much higher and so you risk burning your 19 all wire and apart from the obvious magic tricks that you can pull using this there could be some practical usage examples where you want something mechanically controlled by temperature and so this uh, wire could prove useful and the last items in this video are these uh, phone number displays and i have three different types here this one is the uh, flip type that you press to show or hide your phone number this one kind of attach attaches with a piece of uh, double-sided tape to your dashboard and this one uses suction cups to attach to the windshield these are particularly useful here in europe where streets are small and crowded uh, there are not enough parking spaces so you might want to leave your phone number on display so you can be called to move your car in case you are blocking someone else i think there are many other models available uh, some just sell under a different name but they are physically the same I got these three and hopefully I will like one of these 
and use it. And I'll probably give away the other two to some friends. That was all for today. I hope you found something interesting in this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below and I would also really appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with a new video.